one yeah. of the things I wanted to talk to you about is one of the journeys that you went on pretty, pretty early in your life. And you kind of touched on it in your intro and everything like that. It was actually going into Playboy. And so for, for again, the younger listeners, Playboy used to be an adult men's magazine. It's still around, but now it's basically FHM and Max and they've, they've trying to change their, their overall thing. So I just want people to understand why I'm asking about that specifically. Uh, but can, can you, can you tell me what made you want to do Playboy? And then also just a little bit about how that experience was for you. Yeah, no, it's a great question because I think a lot of people just assume that that was my start in the entertainment business because it is for a lot of, a lot of girls, you know, they aspire Mm -hmm. to be in Playboy. When I was shooting my issue in 1989, the makeup artist and I were talking and she said, you know, Dub, Playboy gets over a thousand submissions a day from women all around the world, you know, and I was older when I shot Playboy, I was 25. I know that sounds crazy, but the girls were shooting their issues when they were 18, 19 years old. I was really, I was like an older playmate, believe it or not. I mean, I know that sounds crazy, but that's just how it was. Playboy was the number one magazine in the world. For me, I didn't really know a lot about Playboy. It wasn't on my radar. I didn't aspire to be in the magazine. I was already working and I already had agents. And what had happened is I had been modeling now for about five years. And I had a few accounts that used me quite a bit, like Body Glove and Ocean Pacific. And and then I did mm-hmm. like commercial catalog work and and I did a lot of commercials. And Playboy had called my agent and I went for an audition for a new book they were coming out with called The Lingerie Book. And I remember my agent telling me about the audition. And the first thing I said was, well, is there nudity involved? Because I associated nudity with Playboy. And she said, I don't think so. This is for the cover. So I went to the famous building on Sunset. I had my audition. It didn't go very well because they gave me a robe and told me to take everything off. And they were going to do some Polaroids. And I said, well, I'm not here for that. I'm here for the lingerie book audition. And they explained to me that everything that they did involved nudity and they needed to see my body. Now, for some young people listening, in 1989, it was a different world and they were looking for birthmarks, scars, tattoos, piercings. They really were looking at your body. And because they weren't doing airbrushing back then, you know, so they had to have, they had to see what they were working with for makeup reasons. And it was a different world. And so I left my undergarments on, did the Polaroids. I I immediately thought they're never going to hire me because I was difficult, you know, Mm -hmm. and I left and kind of chalked it off as, oh, well, that was an experience. And I got a call that afternoon that they wanted to test me to be a centerfold and I I even said to the whoever called me, I said, I think you're confusing me with another girl at the audition. I I was there for something else. And they're like, no, the ma- uh, chief editor saw photos of you and sh- they want to test you to be a centerfold. And I was like, so I called my agent. And she's like, yeah, it's true. They want to test you to be a centerfold. And I said, well, what do you think? Do you think I should do it? Because back at that time in my, where I was in my journey, I was really doing wholesome commercials and catalog work. I wasn't doing anything real sexy. And so I didn't think of myself that way. And so after talking with all my agents and everybody about it, they all decided that it was a really cool step for me because like I said, Playboy was the number one magazine in the world. It was very, very popular as far as really, uh, opening doors and really giving, it was a good jumping, jumping start, especially if you wanted to be an actress. So for me, I was aspiring to be an actress and it did just that. You know, when my issue came out, I was back to back. I was the March centerfold 1990. And then I was on the cover of April 1990. And so that was also very unusual that I was back to back issues. Mm -hmm. And I did the Oprah Winfrey show and February of 1990. And then I, and then NBC called and they wanted me to do the Bob Hope special. And then Playboy, I was the first VJ for the Playboy's Hot Rocks on the Playboy channel. And this is, you know, again, cables new, 
all these cable stations are starting to become popular and Playboy's had their own music channel and I was the first VJ. And so it did, opportunities were coming and I was very busy that first year. Also, um, Donald Trump is on the cover of my centerfold issue. And so that now makes it a collector's item. So today I get so much fan mail because once he became president, anybody that was a fan of Playboy is now sending me the magazine to sign. They're trying to get both of us to sign. And, <laughs> and so it's, 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 it's very interesting how the, the energy and the universe of my experience with Playboy how it was for me back then and how it is for me today. Because for a long time, I didn't really talk about Playboy. You know, I went on to get married and have three kids and I was a full-time mom. And it and because I went by my married name, a lot of people didn't even know that I did Playboy. So I didn't really talk about it for many years. And so it's kind of interesting that it resurfaced and how it resurfaced is because Donald Trump became president. And people realize that I was in that magazine. And and what's really fun is that now, you know, when I do business or I have business meetings, I can always tell when I go in a meeting today if somebody knows because of how they how they interact with me. And I can tell that they're just chipping or what is it when you're chopping at the bit to ask me a question, yeah, yeah. <laughs> to ask me a question about the mansion or half or, you know. And so it's kind of cute. And so it, that's what kind of got me on the, the path of, I should really write a book about going from being a centerfold to being in the business world and how that, what that journey looked like. Well, first of all, thank you for sharing all that. It's very, very interesting to hear about um, the experience of some of those things, because like you said, for people of my age and older, uh, Playboy was an institution. Like everybody knew Playboy, even if you pretended you were reading it for the articles or you pretended that you you thought it was terrible, whatever, you knew what it was. And so to your point, it being the largest magazine in the world, you can't just pass over that and pretend like because it was it showed nudity or other things like that, that it didn't have some kind of cultural relevance, right? So yeah. I think it's also interesting that you point out that back then, because you didn't uh, you didn't use your married name and everything, it's a little bit more difficult to attach it to now because obviously with the internet that becomes a lot more difficult for some of the uh different models and different things like that so there's a different calculation if you will about whether or not they decide to do these type of things so i just think it's very interesting how times have changed in that well uh, realm but i just think it's crazy to me that it's really interesting that you bring no it's interesting that you bring this point up because <laughs> That's another thing. In 1989, there was no internet. You couldn't Google me. Yeah. You couldn't go on the internet. There was no social media. You couldn't Google. I that I didn't take any of that into consideration. Who knew that 30 years later you could put in even my married name and I pop up as Driggs. And so that's when 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 social media really hit is when all of a sudden people were like, "Did you do Playboy?" You know, and I was like, all of a sudden, it was like, I was bombarded with people reaching out to me on social media. Were you in Playboy? Are you that Deborah Driggs? You know, and I was like, oh my God, you know, because I don't, I, for me at my age, that just wasn't a thought. Who knew? And I have to tell you, 10 years ago, you know, when you did, when I did Playboy, you signed away. So every image that I took during my photo shoot, and it, my photo shoot lasted almost eight weeks, every photo I took, Playboy owned. I didn't own any of it. I signed away. Who knew that 20 years later, Hef had an opportunity to now sell libraries of images to all different companies on the internet? He made a fortune. So for a long time, my photo would be associated with some weird porn website where it'd be my <laughs> photo and then you'd click on the link and then I would disappear. It was just to get you in. And so for a long time, people were calling me going, did you do porn? And I'm like, no. And then I, they would show me the website and I'd go on and see, look, you'd click on my name and then the it, I would disappear and then it, it would then ask you for money to go into the website or whatever it was. 
So 10 years ago, I called Playboy and I said, look, I called their legal department and I said, I didn't sign up for that. I said, you know, there are thousands of websites out there that use my images. And I mean, just from your point of view, doesn't that bother you that they're using my images? So they said, well, send me the links. So I spent a week, maybe two weeks, every single link that was using my photo I sent to Playboy, and they actually removed about 80% of it. A lot of the girls don't care, but it kind of bothered me. I was like, why is my photo being used for all sorts of stuff on the internet? And so about 80% of it got taken down. I was really happy about that, that I kind of stood up for myself. And I just said, I don't, I don't think you guys want our images used that way. And she's like, no, we don't. And so she said, send me the links and I'll see what I can do. And between her and then I had hired somebody else because I said, you know, I'm in, I'm in the business world now and all these random things are showing up that I did not do. And so between both teams, a lot of it, we, but you know, it's like a weed. We take one down and 10 more pop up. Yeah, yeah. And so it was like, it was getting expensive. And I was like, is this really going to matter? <laughs> Should I let it go? But, but like I said, we got 80% of it taken down. Where And then a lot of the, it was funny because a lot of the girls were calling me going, how are you doing that? You know? And I said, I'm taking the time and spending the money because it's, you know, I didn't sign up for that in 1989. And so, you know, it's, that's what I'm saying. It's a much different world. Now you can access anything online. And I didn't know that, you know, that wasn't even a consideration, by the way. There was no thought to yeah. that even existing, which is so wild. It's kind of cool. So you, you mentioned how maybe like 20 years, 30 years, whatever it was, uh, later, people finding that now because of either them selling it, uh, selling out the rights to images or other websites, nefarious websites using them to try to bait people into coming into the website or stuff like that, uh, that a lot more people became aware of that you had done it at that time. Did you, when you first did it or later, maybe later in life, was there any like stigmatization by people you knew or, or coworkers or anything like that? Did, like, did you have some kind of negative effects from having done that? Did people treat you differently or anything? That's a really good question. I think, I think that some of the stigma, stigma could be, and you know, I was married, but I felt this when I got divorced mm -hmm. for the first time because, you know, I got married in 92, two years after. So I didn't have a lot of this before because I was with somebody. But after I got divorced is when I kind of saw the stigma is that men just wanted to date me because, you know, oh, she's a playmate. You know, mm -hmm. there's stigma there as to, well, she's a playmate. You know, she's a certain way. And also I think certain women how do I say this politically correct? Certain women had a jealousy about it. Like, you know, I would hear through the grapevine certain things that other mothers would say, well, you know, she was a playmate. She mm -hmm. took off her clothes as if that had anything to do with who I was as a person, you know? So there was jealousy and there was, you know, definitely chatter because, you know, I was the mom that was dropping her kids off at school that posed nude in a magazine. And so that was, there was a lot of quiet chatter going on behind my back. And, you know, I would just laugh, you know, because here's the deal. The only way that could affect me is if, is if I thought I did something wrong or if I thought, mm -hmm. or if I wasn't proud of the fact that I'm part of Playboy history. And, and then I also would realize that those, those chattery people, they have nothing better to do, but to chatter about things that really don't matter. And so, you know, it's like, you got to love your haters, right? Because people don't have anything to talk about, you know, about you, then you're not doing your job, I guess. But, you know, I mean, yeah, so I guess there's jealousy from women, you know, how could she do that? Because they could never do it. So they can't see it for themselves. So they don't understand. 
And there's also, you know, the stigma of if you posed in Playboy, you're probably not that smart, you know? And maybe that's true, maybe not. But for in my case, you know, I'm also very successful in my business life and and in other areas of my life, it, you know, and I, Playboy was really in the big scheme of things. It's such a small part of who I am. You know, it's a big, mm -hmm. it's a big thing as far as that world goes. But in my world, it was a very small part of who I am. It, I chose to be a part of that history. I have no regrets. If my kids came to me today and said they wanted to do it, I'd say, God bless you, do it. You know, because that's the whole point of our life is we get to choose what the path that we want to do and how we want to do it. And then, you know, come to find out a lot of the, a lot of the chatter from women, you know, they, when, when push came to shove, if they ever did get a chance to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, they would actually say things like, that's so amazing that you did Playboy, you know? And then I'd realize that it's just all insecurity, you know, because it's something that they probably thought was cool. And that's the thing that I think you mentioned there that shows how broken sometimes the human logic system can be, at least here in America, because Playboy is the number one magazine in the world, yet everybody tries to look down on people who are in it. Like, it's not the number one magazine in the world because none of you people who are judging me are reading it. You're definitely doing that. And then you're pretending like you're holier than thou or something else. Or or you're watching whatever movie that has, you know, whatever celebrity, male or female, uh, who are nude in it. But somehow that's different. And like, we just have all these stupid things that we go through to try to make ourselves feel better than other people. And I think it's, again, it just doesn't hold up to scrutiny. And it's really sad that that's how we judge people. So thanks for checking out Starting Nowhere. Come find us on Facebook so you can comment on this and other clips and episodes of Starting Nowhere.